Hello. Once again, continuing our systems winning with the closed Sicilian. And uh, we are almost at the end of our extensive playlist in this opening. Again, if you're new uh, to these videos, I have all of the major systems covered in the closed Sicilian. Uh, from White's perspective, if you're uh, interested in um, adding this uh, opening to your repertoire. Right now we're at game 35. And we are now looking at systems where black plays uh, the move to e6. And the position um, is similar to French defenses where, where black will um, here avoid the main lines in the close Sicilian, which usually involve g6, bishop g7, um, d6, etc. e6, knight e7, uh, for example. And he basically challenges uh, the white center immediately. So he skips the king side fan kettle business and he goes right after the uh, white center. And uh, this first game we are going to look at uh, takes place between two former world champions. With the white pieces, we have uh, Boris Baski, who has many games in this line. And with the black pieces, we have a young uh, Gary Kasparov, who is, uh, I think, probably number two or three in the world already uh, at this time. So, this game began e4, c5, and when knight c3 comes out, Kasparov immediately plays e6 with the intention on playing d5. g3, d5, and now e takes d5, e takes d5. Now, a little bit of uh, history here. At this time, uh, Gary Kasparov was uh, the world's leading exponent uh, in the black side of the uh, Queen's Gambit decline variation and uh, um, a variation, a subset of that known as the Tarash defense, uh, whereby the same pawn structure that you see here, uh, uh, you know, will come on the board where Basically, black takes on an isolated pawn, but has uh, some great uh, dynamic uh, chances in the position. So, this position is very familiar uh, to Kasparov. At least he will be comfortable in it, in that he gets, in, order, in, in exchange for the isolated pawn, he gets free piece play. Notice if you look at this position for black. It's easy to develop all the pieces. Knight to f6, knight to c6, bishop to d6, right? Sometimes e7, and bishop to uh, g4, or f5. It's very easy. And then castles. Very easy to get the pieces out. Rook to e, uh, one rook goes to the e file, the other rook go to, goes to the c or d file. Uh, it's not, you know, not hard to uh, place black's pieces. The only downside is. He has to be careful as the isolated pawn could turn into a long-term weakness. So, what's the point of saying all of that? Is Here's a, a little jewel you can take uh, from uh, Kasparov. Is that when you develop your opening systems, try to make, try to pick systems that where the positions are similar or interrelate with each other. Especially those of you, you know, you have jobs or school and things like that. You don't have time to learn, you know, 20, 30 different uh, systems, right? And different types of pawn structures. Try to keep it uh, uniform throughout the different openings. For example, you may know somebody that plays um, Carol Khan, right, uh, against E4, but then they play the Slav, for example, against d4 so you get similar type of uh, uh positions so th that's just uh one to grow on and something to think about when you're putting your openings together so Spassky continue with b bishop g2 notice 
the pressure already on the pawn. Knight f6. Um, if d4, instead of defending if d4, then simply then I'm sorry, let's go back. So at this here, if the move d4 instead of knight f6. So bishop g2 and instead of, instead of knight f6. See d4. Knight to e2 and d3 will be good for black if, and that's a big if, white didn't just have the simple move queen e2 <laughs> when the knight could just go to d5 or e4. <laughs> so just something to think about. So knight f6. Knight G to E2. And of course, even here, D4 is playable and has been played. And these are the dynamic positions that I'm talking about with black. So although black has an isolated pawn, he is by no means worse here. Again, in exchange for the isolated pawn, he gets easy, easy play for his pieces. All right, it's very easy to figure out where the pieces go in, in these type of positions. So for instance, d4, knight drop here. And white is trying to attack. The pawn, of course, black defends. And so this was actually be, uh, a game from a game between Duncan Suttles, Canadian GM, or uh, International Master, rather, um, at the time, versus uh, Tao with the black pieces. And again, just illustrates the placement of the black pieces. All right. And... Then Tao played this move h6. Okay, so let's go back to our position here. So this is why d4 is avoided here by Spassky. It's that he continues to develop. He doesn't want to start a fight yet and try to... Um, Attack an isolated pawn because you've seen how active black's pieces uh, got there. So, after knight g2, though, black has this option of playing d4. And by playing d4 early like this, this stops white's plan of just um, ganging up on an isolated pawn. Alright, because now white can't play d4. So knight e4. Knight takes, takes, and now bishop d7. Alright. I'm sorry, not bishop d7. Knight to d7. Where this knight is just going to go here to f6 and control these squares. Castles. Knight here. Bishop back to g2. Bishop d6. And now c3. Okay, so white has to take the chance to break down this uh, space advantage that black has uh, developed in the center. All right. Now, instead of d three, instead of c three, if d three, 
then the game could have followed these lines castles bishop f4 here bishop g4 takes takes h3 bishop back to d7 knight f4 rook f to e8 queen d2 bishop c6 rook a e1 and knight d7 and that's equal and that that's from from the game spassky korchnoi from the soviet championship in 1968 okay so spassky haven't played that game he decided that c3 gives him more uh chances here's just it's just equal So instead of uh, d3 there, he played the move c3. Kasparov played d3. Of course, castles is possible, but then c takes, c takes, and d3. And... This bishop is very strong at this point, so give it gives um you know white a little little something to to chew on here, especially with maybe the queen coming here, and then both sides having these weak pawns, but blacks is a little more vulnerable, right? As moves like b3 and bishop b2 can be played. So Gary played d3, which is the most natural looking move. Knight f4. And Gary just kept developing castle. Of course, it's extremely um, tempting to play bishop takes f4, right? And blow up the pawn structure. But you got to remember, the king is still out in the open. So queen takes f, queen a4 check would be played first. Again, say after bishop d7, then you gain another tempo. And then you have to move the king. Of course, Gary's not falling for something like that. But, again, it goes against general principles anyway to um, make a move like bishop takes f4 with the king uh, in the middle of the board like that. But here, it just doesn't work tactically anyway. As you can see, all of the open... Um, Diagonals toward the king on the light squares. So bishop f4 happened castle And it Just get grab the pawn Bishop takes g3 F takes g3 of course not queen takes because then um, The bishop can capture again with check So for example if like knight knight takes c5 or whatever then you just play that. Takes. King takes. Knight g4. And then you have one of those classic uh, Kasparov. Kasparov attacks. So. F takes. Queen takes. And it's funny because this position right here reminds me of uh, what is it? Um, uh, Paul, um, was it Morphy? No, Paulson Morphy, where Morphy played the uh, his famous uh, Queen Queen D3, and he he wound up beating uh, uh, Paulson. I think I think that's the uh, game where where he had the same pawn situation here. So Queen D3, this forces White's hand. You have to. Get rid of this bind here. So queen f3. And queen takes f3. Now, I know everybody wants to play this move. So I have to go over it. Because this is the move you would like to play if it worked out uh, tactically. But after queen takes, rook takes c3. The problem is, is uh, rook e1. And then black. I mean, white can bail out with bishop f1 hitting this square right here. And then white will play d3. And I don't think black has enough compensation to, you know, to give up the exchange there. But 
that's something he could check out. But uh, Kasparov didn't believe he had enough uh, compensation there. So, queen f3, queen takes f3. Bishop takes f3. Bishop h3. Spassky went for it. Bishop takes b7. The reason why he did that is because after this, bishop g2, which is kind of passive, then just bishop takes. And then, oops, I'm sorry. And then it's black. Again, with the same idea of coming down here, here, and just having, you know, just a better game uh, overall. So, he went for it. Bishop takes b7. Rook a e8. And then he just simply played bishop g2. Takes, takes, check, rook f2, black takes over the, the e file, b3, and so again, assessing this position, you can see Spassky is a pawn up, but his position is worse, alright, so black has the more active pieces, and this fully compensates for uh, as you can, you know, look at the board, this fully compensates for, uh, white being up a pawn. Black has full compensation, all right? I would rather be, uh, black here. So, again, position over material. So, this is why B3 is played in order to bring, um, you know, some life into the white, uh, position here, Okay. If d4, simply c takes, c takes, and now rook e1. And again, it's hard to develop this rook, rook here like, you know, uh, in the corner like that. So he decides to slip out the back door, so to speak, play, play b3. Rook takes f2. King takes f2, knight g4 check, king g2, and now f5. h3, knight e5 again. This forces that move d4. Can't have the knight resting on d3 like that. And now it is white with the isolated uh, pawn. Bishop g5. And again, even with only a little bit of pieces on the board, you got to be careful. So, for instance, bishop a3, you got this, knight e1, here and here. There's still some uh, danger in the position. So, the bishop came out this way. h6, rook to d1. h takes d5, rook takes d3, rook e2 from Gary. And now rook takes a2. And now d5. And now it's interesting because now it looks like white has the winning chances now. Alright, so you see some topsy-turvy play in this game. And you see it looked like black had like a dominating position. Solely Spassky uh, extricates itself from, that, from the bind on the position. And now you have uh, pawns just running up the d file. Okay, so king f7, right, got to stop the pawn, d6, king e8, and the players agree uh, to a draw here, after rook e3, for example, king d7, Rook e7 check, king d6, rook takes, rook to b2, rook takes g5, 
and king e6 of course this pawn would drop and this pawn would race down the board this pawn would race up the board and so the players agreed to a draw so let's summarize that game it's very interesting and um the e6 variation definitely gives different um the totally different type of look than what we're accustomed to with the closed sicilian um Notice that in other variations, you usually get some type of attack on the uh, queen side of the board, on the king side of the board, rather, or opposite wing attacks developing, where black is attacking on the queen side, white is attacking on the king side, and you get a lot of exciting games. Whereby in this variation, the position takes on a different feel since black is attacking the center so early. You see this struggle in the, in the center. So this was a very interesting game, as you've seen Kasparov achieve a decent uh, position at the cost of a pawn, right? He's down a pawn, but he gets a, a nice little bind on the position. And the bind on the position is so great that white pretty much has to give the pawn, give the pawn back in order to secure an equality. Good quality play by both sides. And here, to me, is probably the height of the black position. B3, fantastic move. Realizing that he has to um, do something before D3 is secured by black. And now he liquidates down. And, of course, Kasparov is in time to secure... Uh, the draw in this position so uh, 2e6 is definitely an uh, interesting variation for uh, for black um, it's something that I will play and of course if the uh, soon to be world champion at the time is playing it uh, it's definitely uh, something that you should look into so that was a great game uh, again please like and subscribe comments are welcome check the links below and for those that are just seeing this for the first time, there's a whole entire playlist dedicated to just the closed Sicilian where I uh, cover all the major systems. Um, and we're looking at it from uh, White's perspective. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you're interested in this opening, pursuing it and adding it to your repertoire, just check the playlist. And check the links below. The uh, actual book that this uh, commentary is loosely based on is, is in there. Also DVDs related uh, to the opening and also the donation uh, link. And uh, that would be a great, greatly appreciated and graciously appreciated also. So we'll be looking at some more games uh, in this particular system. Uh, so stick around and I'll see you soon.